Susie Goodwin here. If you're podcast coaching with me, I'm going to recommend Anchor every single time as your host. And here's why. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And then Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on places like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You guys, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership, and it quite literally has everything you need to become a podcaster right in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. In this fifth episode of the album on personal branding, the third in Serve Then Sell, Brooke is going to go into ideal client, as in should you have one and how in the world do you find him or her? She's got some really fantastic advice for beginning direct sellers who are trying to find that ideal client to serve, as well as tenured direct sellers, what to do when maybe your message isn't hitting the mark or you're starting to feel that spark dim. Welcome to Serve Then Sell with guest host Brooke Norlin of Wear It Boldly. This is the third album of the show and you guys, it's all about personal branding. My co-host Brooke has a decade in direct selling with multiple brands and found her happy place in teaching others about personal branding. She currently represents the brand Lime Life, but has flexed her own leadership muscle in this industry by teaching men and women outside her brand how to find their voice and create a personal brand. And that is what we're going to do here too. We consider this album on branding a starting point and required listening for anyone joining, relaunching, or training others in direct sales. Does not matter what brand you're with. So without further ado, here is Brooke Norlin and myself, Susie Goodwin, in Serve Then Sell Personal Branding. All right. Welcome, Brooke Norland, to the Serve Then Sell podcast. You are with Wear It Boldly, and you're here to talk about creating an ideal client profile with us today. Yes, I'm really excited to do that. This is something I really love to talk about with my clients. All right. So tell us, what in the world is an ideal client profile, and why should we have one as direct sellers? Okay, so I'm going to give away a little secret from my branding class here. So listen up. I have a task that I give to my teammates. I have them sit down and imagine themselves 10, 15, however many years ago. I ask them to write down things about her, what she loved, what was important to her, her strengths, her weaknesses, etc. And then I have them do the same thing with who they are today. My theory is that your ideal client is actually you, whether it be a past version of yourself or who you are today. And your job is to figure out who your message is for and how to deliver it to her. So you want us to figure out who that is. So past self, current self, are we blending them together and then delivering the message? You know, it kind of depends on where you are. Some people choose to just go with the person they are today and bring people along with them on their journey in life. Or some people actually use the person they used to be. They go find people who are at the same point they were back in that time, and they pull them along on a journey to bring them to where they are today. Oh, I love that. And you know, they're probably helping them solve problems along the way. Exactly. You're going in there and you're sharing your experience and you're letting people find their own answers through your experience. Okay. So when people are doing this exercise, what questions should they be able to answer? What does she like to do in her spare time? What motivates her? What makes her laugh? Does she have any problems I can solve? Or sometimes that's called pain points. The answers to these questions help you form your content on social media. It is so much easier to create when you know who you're talking to and why. Can I give an example from my Zia Active business? 
Absolutely. So at the beginning, I knew I was selling activewear and I hadn't really taken the time to think about who I was serving. (laughs) Oh man, every time I would do a product review, I was comparing the clothing to Lululemon. Lululemon this and that, it's like a fast and free or a pace setter. I, I, I was using Lululemon language. One of my customers was like, friend, I've never shopped at Lululemon. So when you say these names, like I don't, you might as well be talking Greek. And I I was tickled. I laughed a lot. But then I started asking around and how embarrassing as it turns out, none of my existing customers at that point, and I was a few months in, none of them shopped at Lululemon. For them, here I was saying, oh, the price points, it's 30% less. If someone out there is not familiar with Active, it's an activewear company. Our price points are about 30% less than Lululemon. Here's the problem. For someone who's been shopping at Ross Dress for Less or Old Navy, you don't need to be talking to them about how it's 30% less. You need to be talking to them about why they should pay $59 for a pair of leggings. I never stopped to think about who I was speaking to. Once I was able to figure out where she had been shopping, what size she was, where like everything about her. Now I lovingly refer to my ideal client as Becky and friend. I can tell you what she watches in her Hulu account. But I mean, (laughs) once I got to know her intimately, this wasn't a problem anymore. But that's the thing that just jumps out at, wow, I did it totally wrong. That is so funny. Everyone gives their ideal client a name and I probably should do that, but I can tell you uh, what her hair looks like, her eyes, what her style is. And like you said, what she's watching on Hulu. It's important to take the pulse on who that is. Do you have a way that you recommend people do that? Um, Yes. Personifying her is really crucial because then you can imagine having conversations with her and that's what makes creating online content so much easier. The conversations you have with her should absolutely be what you're posting about. Just to wrap it up for a listener here, if you don't know who you're speaking to, if you are like me in my early days of Zaya Active and you're just spitting hot fire and you don't know where it's going to, you want people to think about who they are as well as the person 10, 15 years ago, and be able to answer some of those questions. What motivates her? What does she do in her spare time? Does she have a problem you can solve? Those kinds of things. Yes, and I think when you're in the beginning, sometimes you haven't taken a large part of your journey yet. What's important if you can't see a significant change in yourself that you want to speak to, then focus on you and what you love now. Start small and remember that your brand and your ideal client absolutely can shift and change with you as you experience life. All right, Brooke. So what if someone is tenured? Like they've been in their brand for, I don't know, three, four, five years, and they've never stopped to think about their ideal client. What would you recommend that they do? Regardless of being a more calculated person or more of a feeler, I would say you should step back and look at things once a quarter. Check your engagement with your community check your community growth, check in with your heart and make sure you still feel like you're being fulfilled. And if you feel the need to reevaluate where you're going, start at the top, start looking for things that aren't serving you or your clients any longer. What things have you seen that you could add and has your ideal client shifted or narrowed down further? Even if you're feeling like you've really nailed your ideal client down and that your brand is perfect, never limit yourself to that box you're in right now. I have a lot of journey left to take in life and I know that this isn't it for me. I know that I always have room to grow, learn, and change. I mean, years ago, I was a newbie to direct sales, spamming my friends and family, praying I would be able to make sales each month. And now I worry much less about what sales I'm making versus what connections I can build, how I can help people. And those things help me achieve sales goals. But fortunately, I don't have to live in the world of worrying where my next direct sales paycheck is going to come from because I've allowed myself to change. It's a great example of serve then sell. Thank you so much, Brooke. Thank you for listening to Serve Then Sell with guest host Brooke Norlin of Lime Life and team Wear It Boldly. Our goal for you in this album is to help you find your voice and create a personal brand. We would love to hear your thoughts as you listen through the album. Use the hashtag ServeBoldly. That's S-E-R-V-E-B-O-L-D-L-Y. 
serve boldly, and share your thoughts with us. You guys show us your personal brand. When you do, two things are going to happen. Number one, we're going to share on our social media accounts, which have a combined reach of 15,000. And you're going to get a free mini branding workbook from Brooke so you can continue to develop in the topic of personal branding. You guys, you can find Brooke at Wear It Boldly on Instagram. You can also find me over on Instagram at Serve Then Sell or Run Lift Mom Pod. Again, we want you to use hashtag Serve Boldly as you listen through these episodes about personal branding. Show off that brand, ask your questions, enjoy the community, serve then sell.